Mary peered from behind Durnhelm's back. Far away, maybe ten miles or more, there was a great burning. But between it and the riders, lines of fire blazed in a vast crescent, at the nearest point less than a league distant. He could make out a little more on the dark plain, and as yet he neither saw any hope of morning, nor felt any wind, changed or unchanged. Now silently the host of Royad moved forward into the field of Gondor, pouring in slowly but steadily like the rising tide through breaches in a dike that men have thought secure. But the mind and will of the black captain were bent wholly on the falling city, and as yet no tidings came to him, warning that his designs held any flaw. After a while the king led his men away somewhat eastward, to come between the fires of the siege and the outer fields. Still they were unchallenged, and still Theoden gave no signal. At last he halted once again. The city was now nearer, the smell of burning was in the air, and a very shadow of death. The horses were uneasy, but the king sat upon Snowmane, motionless, gazing upon the agony of Minas Tirith, as if stricken suddenly by anguish or by dread. He seemed to shrink down, cowed by age. Mary himself felt as if a great weight of horror and doubt had settled on him. His heart beat slowly. Time seemed poised in uncertainty. They were too late. Too late was worse than never. Perhaps Theoden would quail, bow his old head, turn, slink away to hide in the hills. Then suddenly Mary felt it at last, beyond doubt, a change. Wind was in his face. Light was glimmering. Far, far away in the south, the clouds could be dimly seen as remote grey shapes rolling up, drifting. Morning lay beyond them. But at that same moment there was a flash as if lightning had sprung from the earth beneath the city. For a searing second it stood dazzling far off in black and white, its topmost tower like a glittering needle. And then as the darkness closed again, there came rolling over the fields a great boom. At that sound, the bent shape of the king sprang suddenly erect. Tall and proud he seemed again, and rising in his stirrups, he cried in a loud voice more clear than any there had ever heard a mortal man achieve before. Arise, arise, riders of Theoden! Fell leads awake, fire and slaughter! Spear shall be shaken, shield be splintered, the sword day, red day, ere the sun rises! Ride now, ride now, ride to Gondor! That he sees a great horn from Gulbar to Danavir, and he blew such a blast upon it that it burst asunder. Straightway all the horns in the host were lifted up in music, and the blowing of the horns of Rohan in that hour was like a storm upon the plain, and a thunder in the mountains. Ride now, ride now, ride to Gondor! Suddenly the king cried to Snowmane, and the horse sprang away. Behind him his banner blew in the wind, white horse of the field of green, but he outpaced it. After him thundered the knights of his house, but he was ever before them. Elmer rode there, the white horse tail on his helm, floating in his speed and the front of the first air red roared like a breaker foam into the shore, but Theoden could not be overtaken. Fay he seemed, for the battle fury of his father's ran like new fire in his veins. And he was born upon snow men like a god of old, even as Oromi the Great in the battle of the Valar when the world was young. His golden shield was uncovered, and lo, it shone like an image of the sun, and the grass flamed in green above the white feet of his steed. For morning came morning in a wind from the sea, and darkness was removed, and the hosts of Mordor wailed, and the terror overtook them, and they fled and died, and the hoofs of wrath rode over them. And then all the host of Rohan burst into song, and they sang as they slew, for the joy of battle was on them, and the sound of their singing that was fair and terrible came even to the city. <laughs>